octopus. An octopus, like its other comrades in the cephalopod world, has three hearts. Two hearts are dedicated to pumping blood to the gills, while the other takes care of the rest of the body. Unlike humans, octopuses have blue blood. Their blood lacks hemoglobin, the protein that gives human blood its red color. Instead, they rely on the copper-rich protein hemocyanin to perform oxygen transport duties, as it is more efficient in low temperature and low oxygen environments. Ever wondered why octopuses spend more time crawling than swimming? The answer? Fatigue. Because the heart powering the body stops beating when the octopus is swimming, it tires more quickly. Frogs. Fairy tale princesses take note. Frogs have three chambered hearts. If you turn a frog into a prince, he will likely require medical attention for life in human form. Like humans, frogs have two atria, but they have only one ventricle. The four-chamber human system means that oxygenated and deoxygenated blood remain separate, but in frogs, the blood is mixed when the left and right atria empty into the single ventricle. Does that sound inefficient? It is, but being relatively small and having low metabolisms, frogs don't need to be as efficient as larger animals, and this is where the frog-turned-prince is going to have trouble, unless he retains the ability to breathe through his skin. Frogs absorb oxygen into their blood through their skin as well as from their lungs. Supplementing their oxygen supply in this way allows them to overcome the inefficiency of the one ventricle system. One final cautionary note for princesses, hide the bath towels. If your prince breathes through his skin, it must remain moist at all times. Giraffe. Pumping blood up to a giraffe's brain takes a lot of power, and a human heart would not be up to the task. Luckily, the giraffe has the hardware to push blood all the way around its supersized body. At 60 centimeters long and weighing in at 11 kilograms, the giraffe heart is in the heavyweight division. Not only does blood need to defy gravity for 1.8 meters to get to the creature's head, but it travels about the same distance to reach the giraffe's feet. Gravity helps it on the way down, true, but once the blood gets to the bottom, there needs to be enough pressure behind it to get back up again. Otherwise, giraffes would have really fat ankles. Have you ever felt lightheaded after standing up too quickly? That is the result of a sudden drop in blood pressure. Giraffes move their heads around a lot. They should be permanently dizzy. A combination of nifty adaptations prevents this, though. Giraffes have an unusual jugular vein. This is the vein that carries blood back to the heart from the head, and in most animals, it does not contain muscle. The giraffe's jugular vein does. This muscled jugular vein, along with its thick skin and powerful ticker, increases the animal's blood pressure to about twice that of humans. Blue whale. It's no surprise that the biggest animal on earth has the biggest heart. But is the blue whale heart really the size of a small car? In the absence of actual blue whale specimens, scientists could only guess at the size of the giant mammal's heart. In 2014, though, Scientists from the Royal Ontario Museum embarked on an audacious mission to preserve the remains of a blue whale that had perished in ice off Newfoundland. Most blue whale carcasses sink to the ocean floor, so this event provided a unique opportunity. Recovering the heart was a priority. Scientists opened the chest cavity before venturing inside the carcass to retrieve the heart. Waist deep in blood and lungs, the scientists freed the heart from the surrounding tissue. It then took four of them to push it out through the opening they had made. The heart weighed 180 kilograms and was capable of pumping 150 liters of blood per beat. At 1.2 meters in diameter, it was not quite as big as a car, but rather about the size of a golf cart. Still, retrieving a blue whale heart is not for the faint-hearted. Cockroaches. The hearts of these much maligned insects have 12 or 13 chambers, but rather than blood, the cockroach heart moves a whitish, yellowish substance called hemolymph through their bodies. The nutrient-rich hemolymph nourishes the organs but does not carry oxygen, as insects are oxygenated through openings in their body surface. Even with the most powerful stethoscope, you will not detect a cockroach heartbeat. Their hearts do not beat. Muscles in the body cavity contract and relax to move the gooey hemolymph through the heart. Earthworms. Do earthworms even have hearts? Sort of. Earthworms have five pseudohearts entwined around their esophagus. These pseudohearts squeeze, rather than pump, the blood vessels to circulate blood. So, like cockroaches, earthworms do not have a heartbeat. Unlike cockroaches, however, earthworm blood is red because it contains hemoglobin. 
Curiously, they do not actually need hemoglobin to supply their bodies with oxygen. Earthworms claim their oxygen by breathing through their skin. Zebrafish. Most fish hearts have only two chambers, and the zebrafish, native to Southeast Asia, is no exception. Aside from having half the number of chambers of a human heart, a zebrafish heart does a similar job. It delivers oxygenated blood to the various body organs. The oxygen is obtained from gills rather than lungs, which works swimmingly well for aquatic creatures. What makes this stripy tropical fish so mysterious, though, is its unique ability to regenerate heart tissue. A 2002 study showed that zebrafish can regenerate heart tissue within two months of sustaining damage to 20% of the heart muscle. That is probably why we find so few broken-hearted zebrafish. You might think that we humans have little in common with zebrafish, but scientists think otherwise. Zebrafish are growing in popularity in medical research labs around the world because of their physiological similarities to humans. For a start, they are vertebrates with a backbone, brain, and spinal cord. They also have a heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, bones, and cartilage. In addition, 70% of human genes are found in zebrafish, so if you have any of these quirky critters in your aquarium at home, go and take a closer at them, and thank them for the vital work their brethren are doing to advance medical research around the globe. Wood frog. When we think of creatures of the Arctic, we don't generally think of frogs. That's because the Arctic is really cold. They would freeze, would they not? The answer to that question, unsurprisingly, is yes, but for one species of wood frog, Rana sylvatica, this is not a problem. In winter, when temperatures plummet, the wood frog freezes, and its heart stops beating, sometimes for days or even weeks at a time. Once the temperature rises, though, the frogs thaw out and their hearts restart. The amphibians are as good as new. This is not only astonishing, but also potentially useful to humans. Scientists working in the field of organ transplantation are keen to unlock the secret of the wood frog's cryoprotectants, the processes that help them survive freezing. The ability to freeze and then thaw human hearts would revolutionize the transplantation process. Those waiting for a heart would no longer have to be in the right place at the right time. Donor hearts could be frozen and transported to recipients wherever they might be, potentially saving many more lives. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.